thing the war in Ukraine? The, the situation on the battlefield is extremely difficult. Uh, the, the, the Russians are now push, pushing uh, on many front lines, um, and, uh, uh, and of course the big offensive that the Ukrainians launched uh, last summer didn't uh, uh, give, uh, give the results we all uh, hoped for. And we see how Russia is now building up, uh, how they are acquiring drones from uh, Iran, actually building their own uh, drone uh, 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 factory uh, to produce their own drones in Tatarstan, uh, with help from Iran, how they get uh, ammunition and um, ballistic missiles from North Korea. And they have also demonstrated a high tolerance for casualties. So overall, uh, Russia is, is, is pushing uh, hard. Uh, and this is serious, and, and we should not underestimate, we should never underestimate Russia. Having said that, I really believe uh, that, there are, uh, that there is also a cause for optimism. First of all, we have to remember where we started. When this war started with the full-fledged invasion uh, back in uh, 2022, then most experts believed that Russia was going to take Kiev within days and control uh, Ukraine within weeks. That didn't happen. The opposite happened. The, 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 the Ukrainians pushed back, they liberated the north, the east, and the South uh, has on. Um, uh, uh, they have made big uh, uh, military victories in the Black Sea, opened up a corridor, so now they're actually able to export grain and, and other stuff through uh, the Black Sea. And we have seen how they have been able to hit both uh, uh, the Russian Air Force uh, and uh, the Russian uh, uh, Navy. These are big military victories for uh, Ukraine. The most important thing is that Ukraine has survived as a sovereign independent nation. Um, uh, which is a big win for them. And Russia is losing, meaning that Russia has lost uh, what they wanted to achieve with the war, and that was to control Ukraine. Ukraine, the people of Ukraine, have never trusted Russia less than they do today, and they want to be part of the West, of the European Union and NATO, and they're closer to us than ever before. And this is a big loss for Russia. We have to support them. And I'm also quite confident that NATO allies will continue to provide support. Mm. Because uh, uh, support for Ukraine is not charity. Uh, support for Ukraine is investment in our own security. And therefore, allies have provided unprecedented support. Now we are ramping up production. Uh, there was just an agreement now to acquire uh, uh, close to 1,000 new interceptors for the Patriot batteries. So let me provide you with some real information. Russia is failing on strategic goals. It is first and foremost a military failure. We haven't forgotten that when Russia invaded Ukraine, many feared that Kyiv would fall in just a few days and the rest of the country within weeks. This did not happen. Instead, Russia has lost roughly half of its military capabilities. Ukraine has driven Russia out of half of the territories it had captured. So, as Secretary General of NATO, you're on top of all of the juicy intelligence. Uh, we heard this morning that uh, Russia has lost like uh, more than 200 soldiers, half of their tanks uh, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, 300,000. Say that again? 300,000. 300,000, yeah. So, uh, and half of their tanks. Uh, and Friend, uh, uh, Prince Faisal has putting it, we are calling for a sustainable ceasefire because I believe that a ceasefire, unfortunately, doesn't fall from the sky. We can only reach a ceasefire if both sides are ready that the suffering for oneself also ends the suffering from the others. And my assessment... And